Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Minnesota Twins and the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Twins today is Jim Perry, whose record is 1-0 with a 3.86 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today making his season debut is Jim Mudcat Grant. So we uh, unbelievably pitched a shutout versus the Yankees in our last game. Uh, we won four to nothing, and we are four and three very early on in the season. Is it possible that our team is good? It's hard to imagine. I mean, our starting pitching up until yesterday has been suspect at best. Uh, Steve Barber has now only given up one run in his two starts and is looking pretty damn good. Uh, maybe is our staff ace. Um, we've made a total of four trades uh, right out of the gate. Um, and I think we are making our team better. Let's take a quick look at our roster before we start today's game versus the Twins. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here with the roster. Um, we are going to put uh, Tommy Agee in left field, and he's going to be our cleanup hitter. Is he as good as uh, Don Mincher, who we just traded to the Mets? I, I don't know. Um, defensively, he's great, and it does allow us to move Mike Hegan to first base, where he's rated a 96. So we've improved in left field, where Hegan was pretty solid, um, but we've definitely upgraded in left, and we've highly improved at first base with Mike Keegan. So I feel good about that. Also, we've decided that we're going to do a lefty-righty matchup um, platoon, I should say, in center field with Steve Hovley um, and Wayne Comer. Hovley, I think, is superior to Comer, uh, but, you know, I don't think either one of them deserves an everyday starting job. Van Kelly, we've given the second base job. Uh, to kind of lock down that position. And Fred Stanley is our best offensive option at short. But I think Gordy Lund is probably the better defensive option. And Ray o Euler can't hit. I mean, we're, I'm actually considering uh, just flat out cutting him and making him a free agent. So we've also added uh, Yvonne Morrell, who is in AAA. Uh, John Pocabella, catcher. Uh, Don Bosch that we just picked up, and Gary Sutherland. None of these guys, if you look at their number, uh, their ratings here, none of them are over 80. So, I mean, I don't, these are, are better, you know, at best they are um, quadruple A level players, or maybe, uh, you know, a fill-in type player. Uh, and then in single A, we have another catcher, uh, Duffy Dyer, that we picked up, uh, Gary Gestad, Rebbe Hermoso, and Ted Martinez. So, these are all guys that um, maybe in the future will be good for us. We did lose Don Mincher. That could be tough. He's been, he was really great for us. But uh, if you look at our pitching staff, we got Mudcat Grant as a, um, a new arrival. He will get the start today. And we're going to talk in depth about him, uh, do a deep dive on a Mudcat. How did he get the name Mudcat? We're going to let you know. And then Ron Locke is the only other pitcher that we've picked up. Uh, with this flurry of trades, and I don't know if he's got a future or not. But I do feel like we've upgraded our team, and we're already winning. So that is going to be the thing. Can we keep it up? Uh, the Twins come to town. They are in first place. Let's get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel, please. Mudcat Grant, he did not make a start when he was in Montreal. Um, or neither did he pitch in relief. Uh, we did have the day off yesterday, so everybody in the bullpen is rested. Our lineup, you just saw, versus uh, Jim Perry. He's a right-hander, so there's our lineup with our new arrivals uh, in the game. Okay, let's go ahead and do the official lineup rundown for the Minnesota Twins batting... Leadoff in left field is Mike Adams. Batting second at first base is Rod Carew. Batting third in right field is Tony Oliva. 
Batting cleanup playing third base is Greg Nettles. Batting fifth at shortstop is Leo Cardenas. Batting sixth and catching is John Roseboro. Batting seventh in center field is Ted Ulander. Batting eighth at second base is Frank Quilici. And batting ninth and pitching today is Jim Perry. Here's Mudcat Grant. Take a look at him real quick. He, we uh, see he was traded over here from the Expos. Uh, he's a two-time All-Star in 1965, right here. Um, he led the American League in wins with 21 uh, and finished sixth in the MVP uh, voting. Uh, also, he did lead uh, the American League in home runs given up that year. Uh, in 1969, he was drafted in the expansion draft from the Dodgers uh, by the Montreal Expos. And then later in the season, he was traded to St. Louis. Overall, in 1969, he went 8-11 with a 442 ERA. Uh, for, the, for Montreal in 69, he was their opening day starting pitcher. And uh, he got rocked uh, in that game. Uh, it was taken out early, although the Expos did uh, hold on to win. In uh, 1958, he was um, signed by the Cleveland Indians, and his roommate was uh, Larry Doby, who was the guy that nicknamed him Mudcat. He said it was because he was ugly as a Missis Mississippi Mudcat, and the name just kind of stuck. Um, after baseball, he um, was known for writing poetry. He also wrote a book called Black Aces. Uh, he was a broadcaster for the Indians, the Dodgers, and the A's. And he uh, also sung the national anthem uh, several times for all those teams. He um, and his nephew is uh, former Philadelphia Phillies player uh, Dominic Brown. So uh, a little bit of a synopsis there of uh, Mudcat Grant. You'll see here he's age 33, so he's you know later on in his... A pitching career. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 46%. Fastball um, is rated in 83. He's got three other pitches all below average. Overall, his rating is a 78 and his endurance is only a 55. So um, coming off the year he had for the Dodgers where he only started four games, I think that's influenced his endurance rating and lowered it to the point where we might not be able to um, get deep starts with him but he's as good as anybody on a roster he's 33 years old and the right-hander becomes a free agent at the end of the year so we'll have to consider whether or not we want to resign him let's take a look at our much improved defense the only liability we have now is in right field uh with tommy harper and we want him up you know in the lineup so uh yeah we're gonna have to accept that uh poor defensive rating and then we'll most likely pinch, uh, not pinch it, uh, do a defensive replacement, maybe with uh, Whitaker out there. That's that's going to be our plan uh, going forward. Oh, shoot, there's another thing I wanted to mention. I guess we'll show it after the game. So let's get the game started with Mike Adams leading off against Mudcat Grant. Now he walks him. Oh, no. <laughs> it's more of the same. It's more of the same. We walk Adams. He's got great speed. Rookie was batting 269. Here is a uh, Hall of Famer Rod Carew, one of my personal favorite uh, players of the 70s. Ground ball to second. Can we turn two with our dynamic defense? We cannot. Only play from Kelly was to go to second to get. I'm sorry, to go to first to get the out there as Adams advances to second. So it is now a runner in scoring position for Tony Oliva. Betting 389. He's got one home run. Ground ball to third. That'll hold Adams. Oh, an error. An error by our third baseman, Rollins, and it's first and third. So, um, could have twice gotten out of this inning with double plays. And instead, things are not looking so good here. We've got a Cra uh, Greg Nettles. Everybody calls him Craig. Who spells it Greg like that? Come on. First and third. Here's Greg Nettles. Brown ball to third. Can we go around the horn? 
Oh, we do, and we do get out of the inning. So uh, the uh, walk and the error um, goes for naught. So we go to the bottom of the first. Let's do our lineup rundown for today's game. Batting leadoff. Playing right field is Tabby Harper. Batting second at first base is Mike Hegan. Batting third at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting cleanup playing left field is Tommy Agee. Batting fifth and catching is Jerry McNurtney. Batting sixth in center field is Steve Hovley. Batting seventh and second base is Van Kelly. Batting eighth at shortstop is Fred Stanley. And batting ninth in pitching today is Bud Camp Grant. All right, let's take a look at Jim Perry. I didn't do a deep dive on Jim Perry. We'll save that for another time. He is making his second start of the season. He went. He's 1-0 with that 3.86 ERA, 3 Ks and 7 innings pitched. Um, the previous year, he went 8-6 and six, uh, for the Twinkies. Uh, his fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 44.6%. His fastball is his best pitch. It's rated an 85. He's got a curve and a slider in his arsenal. Overall rated an 83, the 33-year-old righty. Goes to free agency in 1972. Uh, obviously, he is Gaylord Perry's brother. And there's the defense for the Twins. So they have defensive liabilities in left field with Adams and really at first base with Carew. Carew never really known as being a good defensive player. He spent a large uh, portion of the uh, last few years of his career as a DH. So uh, we've got Tommy Harper leading off against Jim Perry. Last couple games, we've jumped ahead early as Harper flies out to center. It would be good to get another lead here. One down, Mike Hegan. Next man up with the ground ball to short. Cardenas makes the play. Two outs. Here's Rich Rollins. Had that error in the top half of the inning. And he comes back with a base hit into left. Do we want to go for two? We don't. Adams not good defensively, but probably not worth the risk with the cleanup hitter. Tommy Ag up. Now Ag here's his first at bat as a pilot. He only had three pinch hits uh, opportunities with the Mets uh, before he was traded over here. The previous year, uh, you know, as we discussed in yesterday's uh, trade, uh, didn't have a very good season with the Mets. And really, other than his uh, 1966 season with the White Sox, has not been all that productive. Um, and he does strike out a lot. So, you know, we take what we can get from him. I think it's going to be a positive having AG in our lineup as he taps it right back to Perry for out number three. We go to the top of the second inning. No score. Leo Cardenas leading off. Ground ball to short. Stanley tosses him out. One out. That'll bring up John Roseboro. Roseboro batting 409. He's got a home run. Popping it up on the infield. Fred Stanley calling for it, making the catch. And leave it up to Ted Ulander to get something going here. Left hander's batting 357 on the season flips it into right center field and it will be caught by the right fielder tommy harper good job by him getting over there we go to the bottom of the second inning mcnurtney leading off mcnurtney hovley and kelly 2-0 pitch to mcnurtney and a base hit in the left field we've got a good hitting catcher he's got two home runs on the year betting 345. okay here so here's steve hovley our center fielder giving him a shot to, to kind of earn that center field job. A ground ball to third and a double play. That's not going to get it done. So the double play clears the bases for Van Kelly. And uh, yeah, between Hovley and Kelly, we're, we're giving them all the opportunity they can get to win the positions that they're in. But not a lot of action lately. So we go to the top of the third. But can't grab. Got to keep an eye on his pitch total. He's only got 25 pitches thrown. 
as Frank Quilici steps up and walks him. Uh, you want the leadoff guy that always comes back to haunt you. We're going to pull the corners in as the pitcher, Jim Perry, is up. Assuming he's going to try to lay down a bunt. He does. A nice bunt to third. Oh, and they go to second to get the force. Great job by Rollins. That'll make up for the error. Now we've got the slow as molasses. Perry on first. It's 56 speed. One down. Here's Mike Adams back to the top of the lineup. Brown ball to second. Can we turn two? There we go. So, double plays in two out of three innings. That's how we're going to keep ourselves in the game with these uh, suspect starting pitchers. Bottom of the third here is Fred Stanley. Stanley flips it into the left. It will be caught by Adams. Out number one. That'll bring up Mudcat Grant. He batted 129 in 1968 for the Dodgers. And he walks. Wow. He's got a good eye. He's a pitcher. You ought to know. What pitch looks good. So Mudcat Grant on first. We're going to let Tommy Harper swing away. I was thinking about hitting and running here, but we're going to take a cut. And that was a good call. Base hit in the left. Grant will hold at second. And that's our third hit of the ball game. First and second now. One out. Here's Mike Hegan. We have him in the number two spot because he's, he does tend to walk a lot, but he has not really been clutch with the bat. Ground ball to third. And an error will score a run. So both teams, third basemen, have made errors. This one by Greg Nettles. It was a throwing error, so Hegan goes to second. Harper's on third, and there's only one out still. Um, okay, so one down. Here's Rich Rollins. Rollins batting 343. One two count, and he strikes out looking. I was thinking about having him try to hit it to the right side, but. Um, I guess maybe I'll regret that. That's the first K for Perry. And now Tommy Agee has a chance here to win over the hearts of the fans with a base hit. Full count. And he walks. So now the bases are loaded with two outs. For Jerry McNertney, he's now with uh, Mincher gone, he's kind of our best hitter. Full count to McNertney, and he walks. A run in. Perry walks his third batter. Second one of the inning, and it's 2 nothing Pilots. Two down for Steve Hovley. Now, the one thing we can say about Hovley is he's been very clutch in the time that he's uh, been called on here, and he's going to pop it up to second. So not this time. We do get two runs on the board. We go to the top of the fourth inning. It's 2 nothing Seattle. Rod Carew is going to lead off against Mudcat Grant. Carew. Fly ball to center. 341 feet. An easy catch for Hovley. One out. Next man up is Tony Oliva. Following the same pattern. Fly ball to center. Two quick outs from Mudcat Grant. Love to get a 1-2-3 inning here. Round ball to second from Nettles. And that'll do it. So a 1-2-3 inning. We are starting to get the pitching that we uh, we need to make this uh, at least a 500 team, right? All right, Van Kelly leading off the bottom of the fourth. Ground ball to third and another error. Oh, wow. Nettles. I mean, Nettles is a gold glover, right? I, I mean, I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head. But I believe Greg Nettles won a couple of gold gloves with the Yankees. So we've got the leadoff man on. We have a 2 nothing lead, so we don't need a sack bunt here. We need to give some reps to our batters as Stanley flies out to right. Now we will drop a bunt down with our pitcher, Mudcat Grant. He walked first time up. Let's see if he can get a sack bunt. He lay it down. Oh, he pops it up. Can Kelly get back? I hope he can. Yes, he does. So that did not work as well as we'd hoped. What's John Roseboro's arm? 
It's an 89. Holy cow. With Az-Q of Boston and Munson on the Yankees and now Roseboro, we have not had a catcher yet we can run wild on. And Tommy Harper is going to fly out to left center field. So the error uh, goes by the wayside. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Mudcat Grant only 42 pitches, so he's, he's been efficient despite walking two. And there's the first hit for the Twins. It's going to be, oh, it's going to be thrown out at second. There's the defense right there, folks. That's why we got ourselves Tommy Ag thrown out at third as he was going for three. He got a double and he got greedy. Nicely done. So the bases remain empty, but that is the first hit given up by Grant today. There's a ground ball into the hole for Stanley. Stanley's got good range. Two outs. There's Ted Ulander, and Ulander's got a hit. So we've kind of reached the point now with Grant um, where maybe he's going to slip up a little bit. Fortunately, it's the number eight hitter, Frank Polici. He is batting 500 with a home run. Probably shouldn't uh, talk so bad about him. There's a ground ball to second, and that'll get us out of the inning. So we're headed to the bottom of the fifth with Mike Hegan due up. It's 2 3 and 4. Hegan leading off. Oh, there we go! Right in the love zone from Jim Perry. He goes up Otako. That is his first home run of the season, and it's 3 0. Seattle. I, I mean, we've. Maybe we might have a good team. Rollins lining out the center. I don't want to, like, get my hopes up. I mean, I don't... We are in a division, the West, uh, that, you know, just created. That doesn't really have a truly great team in it. Um, we have two expansion teams, you know, so that gives us a shot as we go... Uh, we have two down with uh, Jerry McNerty up. I guess we have a shot not to finish last, but McNerney infield single to first. There's five hits for the Pilots. Two down. Steve Hovley up. He's over two today. And a line drive right at the shortstop, Cardenas. 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 Cardenas? I don't know. I'll have to check the uh, proper pronunciation. We go to the top of the sixth inning. We get that insurance run on the home run from Hegan, and that gives me uh, some courage to go another inning with Mudcat. Mudcat. Uh, they're going to pinch hit and bring in Bruce Look. Backup catcher and the left-handed batter. Here we go. Top of the sixth. Line drive right at Stanley at short. There's one down. Next man up is Mike Adams. Adams 0 for 1. He walked to start the ball game. Oh, Adams goes Oppo Taco himself with a home run to right field. That is his first home run on the season. What is Adams' power? 76, but he still goes deep. We got that short porch. Not short porch. I don't know if you call it short porch, but um, the, the alley is short at 350 so he hit 370 that wouldn't even been out of most stadiums they're usually 375 in the alleyways so we'll take our lump there that's the third hit for the pilots i'd be for the twinkies rod carew up next flips it to right there's a, a ball that's catchable two outs tony oliva next man up with a ground ball to third and that'll do it. So we go to the bottom of the six. We're up three to one. That'll probably do it for Mudcat as uh, he's due up in the line and uh, in the order here. They're going to bring in uh, Bob Miller. Bobby Miller, first appearance of the year. He was in 45 games for the Twins last year. All in relief. 0-3, a 274 ERA, 41 Ks, and 72 and a third innings pitched. Opponents batted 242 against him. Two saves. His fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 34.5%. Fastball is his best pitch. It's rated an 82, and he's got a palm ball. 
Overall, rated a 77, the 30-year-old righty goes to free agency next year. Okay, we got Van Kelly leading off against Bob Miller. Here we go. 0-1 count, and Kelly pops it up to the left of second base. There's one out. Kelly not getting the job done here. Next man up is Fred Stanley. Stanley walks. And they're going to pull the infield in for Grant, but we're, we're certainly going to pinch it here. Good job by Grant today. Leaving with the lead, that's all you can ask for. We're going to bring in Steve Whitaker. Whitaker, he will probably come in and play defensively as uh, a replacement for Harper, who's up next. Here we go, Steve Whitaker. He's looking for his first hit. There it is, base hit to left. Stanley goes to third. Good hustle. Taking advantage of uh, Adam's weak arm out there in the left. Okay, we're going to hit and run with Tommy Harper. Good speed on the base path. First pitch swinging. Base hit to right. We get that run back as Stanley scores. Whitaker goes to third. And it's 4-1. to one. Seattle. Now let's see if we can get a sack fly from Hegan. Anywhere in the outfield should score easily. There we go. That's optimal. As he flips it to left field, Whitaker will tag and score. Five to one, Seattle. Nicely done. Okay, we are going to try to steal here with Harper on first. I don't think he's got a stolen base yet, right? No, he's he's zero for one on the year. We only have one stolen base as a team, and I think it's Hovley who has it. And he steals second base. So there we go. Harper's got his first stolen base of the season. And he's in scoring position for Rich Rollins. 1-2 count to Rollins, who pops it up to second, where Quilici makes the catch. So put a couple runs on the board. It's 5-1. to one. We are going to move Whitaker defensively into right field. And Tommy Harper comes out of the ballgame. Yes, we're going to bring in a new pitcher. There are two lefties coming up, um, and we have used Morris already five times. And he's walked five. He, how's, let's check his splits. Yeah, lefties, <laughs> lefties are batting 600, so it's kind of the reverse split situation. But he hasn't really had that many opportunities. Oops, sorry, Tommy Harper. Uh, so we are going to bring in Morris here. John Morris facing the left-hander, Greg Nettles. Ground ball into the hole. It's short. Stanley's got a good range over there. That's the second time we've seen him go into the hole to get it. There's one down. That's going to bring up Cardenas. Cardenas. Now I've got like a thing about it in my head where I, I know I'm saying it right, but my brain is already thinking it's wrong. And then he walks Roseboro. All right, well, it's Ted Ulander up. He's a lefty. Runner on first. Have we struck out anybody today? I don't think Mudcat got anyone. And Ulander sends it to center for out number three. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Bob Miller comes back out. Tommy Agee looking for his first hit as a pilot, and he strikes out swinging. Out number one. Here's Jerry McNurtney. He's got a couple hits today. Skies it on the infield where Cardenas makes the play. Two down. For Steve Hovley, and a slow roller to first, and an error by the first baseman, Carew. Third error on the day. Corner infielders not making it easy on the pitchers. And then Van Kelly hits a ground ball to short. So that'll do it. We go to the top of the eighth inning. Got a bunch of righties coming up, so that'll be it for Morris. 
Let's bring in uh, Gene. Mm, yeah, we're going to bring in Gene Brabender here to close out the ball game. Take a look at Brabender. This is only his third appearance, but he's thrown six innings. Uh, he's given up uh, three hits and two walks, four Ks. Opposed to batting 150 against him. Fastball tops out to 87 miles an hour. He's a four pitch pitcher. He's got a slider and a sinker to work with. It's pretty solid. Overall rated an 80. The 27 year old righty goes to arbitration at the end of the year. Okay, here's Quilici leading off, followed by the pitcher's spot. He strikes out Quilici. So there's our first K of the day. And they are going to pinch hit. They're bringing in Rick Rennick. A third baseman to pinch hit here. So one down, and he walks. Of course. Of course he does. So we have a runner on first for Mike Adams, who's already gone deep today. Full count. Oh, that pitch was close. But he's walked back to back to bring up a left-hander, and we do not have any more lefties in our bullpen. So we have to go with Broadbender here. So frustrating. Um, it's Carew. Can we pull the outfield in? Is that even an option? Nope. Okay. Let's get a double play. We've got two today already. There's a fly ball to center. Carew flying out to center. He's got an over today. As does Tony Oliva, right? Let's look at the in-game stats. We forget to do that now. Yeah, Oliva over three. The O in Oliva is for hitless. One, two count. And he gets jammed by Brabender. Shallow right field. And the play is made. So we're going to the bottom of the eighth inning. They're going to bring in Ron Paranowski. I believe he is technically their closer. He does have a save. A long-time pitching coach. Pretty good pitcher in his era. Wow, he never had an ERA at this point above 3.18. A career ERA of 260. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 40.9. Sinker rated an 82. Solid lefty goes to free agency next year. Okay, so Fred Stanley's going to face Ron Paranowski. Ground ball up the middle. Play made by Leo Cardenas. One down. Here's Steve Whitaker. Whitaker gets jammed inside. Still looking for his first hit. Oh no, he does have a hit today. That's right. Duh. And then we're going to let Brabender take a cut so he can close out the ball game. Oh, pretty sharply hit ball to first. And the play is made. So we're going to the top of the ninth inning. Broadbender comes back out. We've got four, five, and six due up. A couple of lefties mixed in. Here is Greg Nettles leading off, and he walks. Come on! You, <laughs> you guys have to be as frustrated with this as I am. I mean, it's... I, I can, So, like, it's like the game's predetermines how many base runners there should be. Right? And so they've only got three hits, so they have to give them a half a dozen or more walks to have whatever the whip would be for a nine-inning game at Six Park or something. You know? So, like, it's so frustrating that we just can't get away from whatever the um, uh, amount should be for the game. Now, I'm, I'm complaining, but then Cardenas hits into a uh, double play. So we are down to our final out with John Roseboro. And it's a base hit back through the box. There's the fourth hit to go with those half dozen walks or more. So the runner on first will bring up Ted Ulander. And that might fall in for a hit. It does! A base hit for Ulander. It's first and third. Will the Twins get a uh, garbage time run here? 
Nope, a ground ball to short. Stanley up with it and tosses him out. Hey, the Pilots are 5-3 and three on the year as they win 5-1. to one. Handshakes, butt slaps, lap mistakes. Oh, no. Oh, nuts. We're going to lose Steve Barber for a month due to a wrist stress fracture. That is our best pitcher. And we have to make some decisions now uh, of who will get that job. Is there a trade offer? Looks like there's going to be one. As it's thinking about it hard. Hard. Oh, my God. You got to check a physician. That's how hard this is. Come on, man. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. I don't know if this is like a, if because it's thinking it's, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's good because it's thinking you can't, you can't hear me or not. But uh, nonetheless, there was actually no trade. That's so bizarre. But um, we win five to one. Let's take a look at the standings. And then I want to show you something real quick. Um, yes, yeah, so we're five and three. We beat Minnesota. We're a half game back. We've won three in a row. Uh, both uh, all three games we'd won were against first place teams. That's kind of amazing. We are batting 258, and our team ERA is down to 450. Okay, let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Jim Fragosi gets four hits. He was traded over to Baltimore in the preseason from the Angels. Uh, yeah, Brooks Robinson goes one for four. Willie Stargell on his new team uh, goes two for five. Nicely done. So the Orioles are serious, and there's the, our loss of uh, Steve Barber for a month. That, that sucks. That's going to be tough. Um, okay, let's take a look at transactions. Uh, are there any trades? There is a trade. Wait. What? Okay, so it's a little out of order here. But Rico Petroselli is traded to the Giants. Wow. Okay, so Boston is giving up what like one of their best hitters. Their shortstop, Rico Petroselli. He goes to the Gigantes for Gary Lavelle, like a at best a solid reliever. And Ron Bryant, who is maybe a middle reliever at best. So that doesn't make any sense unless they're trying to save payroll or something. Uh, there's an injury to Maury Wills. Dislocated toe. Be back in six days. And then that wrist stress fracture. Okay, before we, um, we, we go to uh, the box score... What I wanted to show you regarding trades is that I have gone through and taken a few of our players off the um, uh, off the uh, trading block. Sorry. So, for example, uh, Tommy Harper. Oops, I'm so sorry. He, we might trade him, but I think we need him. And I think he could be valuable to us in the future. So, if there's a good offer, yeah, he's tradable. Um, Hegan's still on the block. Rollins is on the block. We're not going to trade Tommy Ag. I think he's going to help us. Uh, McNerney on the block. Steve Hovley, I kind of like him, but now he's kind of now he's sucking the pipe. So I don't know. Um, Van Kelly's on the block. Fred Stanley, we might trade, but he's so young, and he's been very valuable so to us so far. So he's got six walks in seven games. So you get the picture. Um, we're not going to go through everybody, but I just wanted to show you that when we started the season. Uh, we had everybody on the trading block. And now that we've done some trades and things are developing, I think that we are okay enough to pull some people back to build a team around. All right, let's take a look at the box score. Like and or subscribe to the channel, folks. Uh, player of the ball game. This is a tough call. Mike Keegan did crush it. I think we're going to give it to him for his home run, his first on the year and his first game at first base. Tommy Harper had two base hits and a stolen base. His first of the season, Mudcat Grant made a good first impression, folks. Uh, he is 1-0. and 0. 
Yeah, we gave up six walks, only struck out one. They walked four, struck out two. So I guess, you know, it's the same for everyone, and we just have to learn to live with it. As long as we're winning, that's I can live with it. Uh, so that's going to do it for today. We're going to have uh, week eight of our Detroit Lions 1980 alternate history season tomorrow. So no baseball game on Sunday. Until Monday, everyone have a great day.